could drive this thing all day. Welcome to the episode of uh, Jay Leno's Garage. Tonight we feature a really remarkable car. This is a one-off. I want you to take a look at it and see if you can figure out what it is. Now, if you're a real astute car enthusiast, you'll know his name and you'll know this car. But for the rest of us, just get a look at it and take it in and uh, some interesting design cues, very well proportioned. You know, a lot of times when uh, guys design and build their own cars, you have to be polite because there's always something that's a little bit off or something that doesn't look quite right. Uh, well, this is not one of those examples. This is about as professionally a built uh, one-off as I've ever seen. Um, look, at the, look at the side. Little kind of GT40 influence in the front. The rear end I love. Look at the rear of this thing. Very cool. Kind of sports car, kind of hot rod. Really a fascinating car. This is an Excalibur RS. Do you know about it? Let's meet the man who built the car. Uh, this is Bob Shaw, designer, builder of this car. Uh, Bob is one of those guys that's kind of legendary in the, in the car world. Bob, tell us about your background. Well, I got interested in cars when I was in high school, like most of us. I got, was one of the very early sports car guys in Chicago. I stayed with sports cars all my life and uh, got interested in vintage racing. Yeah. And, Brooke Stevens, who designed this car, was very good to me. He let me take cars out of his private collection and restore them and race them. Now, for people who don't know, explain who uh, Brooke Stevens is. He is a legendary designer. A legendary designer from Milwaukee. He was very good to me. He allowed me to take cars out of his private collection and restore them and race them, which I very much appreciate. I built his car as a tribute to him. He was a good friend. He was. He was crippled all his life. He had polio as a child. Now, he wasn't just a car designer. He also designed, he was, a, like he said, an industrial designer. Right. He, he was one of the very first industrial designers. In fact, he was an originator of the Industrial Design Society, one of the originals, with Raymond Loy. And what did you tell me? He put the window in the clothes dryer? Was that That his? was one of his... One that of seems his so simple, but yeah. he did it first. Yeah. 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 And he also invented the wide mouth peanut butter jar. Okay. <laughs> which seems like a funny claim to fame, but... Yeah, <laughs> and the steam iron was his, I think. Wasn't yes, it, it was, uh-huh. Yeah, the steam iron, but, but obviously uh, a good car designer as well. And this was the very last car he designed? Yes, okay. it was never built. He built a coupe version of it. Right. What year would that have been? In the early 50s. Okay. The, his first car, the Excalibur J cars, which were built on Henry J chassis, were successful race cars, and he built this car as a, a follow-up race car or he was going to build it as a race car. And what engine do you have in this we car? We have a small block Chevy in it. Okay. But we've made the valve covers to conceal it. Yeah. But astute fellows like you can tell it's a Chevy engine right, by, yeah. by the exhaust ports. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that clever. <laughs> and what, what engine would he have had in it back in the day? Did he have any? Uh, he would have had a supercharged Studebaker in it. Okay, that's right. Yeah. That's what the coupe has in it is right. a supercharged Studebaker. I also raced that car for about five years and ran it in the Colorado Grand. Yeah. And that would have been, uh, what, a 289, right? Is that what it was, a 289, the Studebaker? I forget what size it was. Yeah, something like that. Something like now, that. where did you build this car? Did you build it at your house, at a shop? No, no. The chassis was built in Scottsdale by Chuck Ron. Okay. Scottsdale, Arizona. He built all my chassis. And what is the body? Is it... Uh, it's all aluminum. All aluminum body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the build quality on this, on this car is pretty unbelievable. How long did it take you? Eight years total from beginning till we laid out the chassis on the garage floor with Chuck. Okay. Wow. And Isn't then when the chassis was done, we shipped it to Charlevoix, Michigan, to Dave Draper's shop at Time Machines. Yeah. Dave is a dear friend and an ex-GM designer. And did it was, the car was totally built in his shop. And when did you finish this car? 2006. Okay. Did uh, Brooke Stevens ever see it at any point? No, no. He, unfortunately, he passed away before yeah. it was done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm really sad about. Very cool. But Very his cool. family did. His son saw it. Yeah. Now you mentioned you incorporated some design cues from cars you had. That I previously owned GT40. Like and the GT40. So did Brooke Stevens have that GT40 look on the front of it or is that no, yours? No, that's mine. That's yours. It okay. was necessary to get it to cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, we also incorporated some Bugatti touches like the exhaust system. Right, right. That's another story. And do you have drawings or sketches of the car he originally designed? 
Yes, I have the scrapbook with pictures okay. of it. Okay. Oh, let's take a look at that. Let's okay. So this is a model of the car, correct? Yes. Or, yeah. He gave me a model and an artist rendering of the yeah. car, and that's what we built the car from. Now, as you can see, it looks like the car had big fins, as were popular back in the 50s. Yeah. You trimmed those down a bit, or took them off, I guess. Yeah, we yeah. took them off. And you changed the front end because it wasn't cooling properly. This is the front end he had. Boy, that's a good-looking front end, too. Yeah, very nice. But I knew we couldn't get the engine to cool. Yeah, just couldn't end. get enough, uh, couldn't couldn't get get enough air, air through there. Yeah. Couldn't get the air out. Yeah, very shark nose. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see what else do we have in here. Now, where is this car? It's in Milwaukee. His son David owns it. And what uh, what engine is in that one? That has a supercharged Studebaker on it. Okay, that has a supercharged. With a McCullough blower on it. Right, right. Kind of a little, almost a little Corvette in there somewhat. Sketches of this before it was made was were smuggled to GM. Yeah. And Larry Shinoda, during Bill Mitchell's tenure at GM, and Larry Shinoda, who designed the Stingray, used those sketches as oh, part that's of his fascinating. inspiration. Okay, yeah. Let me see. That's the car. And unfortunately, all the three characters in that scenario are passed passed yeah, away. Yeah. But I got that story and pretty good advice from the family members. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, it's pretty robust and it's very quite, robust. Quite sophisticated that's as well. What, that's what Chuck Ron built in Scottsdale. Almost what the uh, the Italians would call superleggero. Is that what you call that? Sort of like a birdcage or sort yeah. of like the it's almost like the gullwing Mercedes. The yeah. way it's, it's all just right. a number two. The superleggero is the way of building a chassis to attach the metal to. Right. Right. As opposed to coach belt, which is done with wood. Right. Right. And the brilliant thing about this car is that it's all aluminum. It's all just hand formed. And uh, fiberglass is nice, but there's nothing like uh, <laughs> nothing like aluminum. Aluminum just really yeah. shows quality to me. As you can see, just how many hours we talk in here? Eight years, how many hours that is? Eight years of what? Forty hours a week? I mean, was this a full-time project? Yeah, it was for me, but not for the laborers in the car. Right, right, right. I brought together a bunch of very talented friends to make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this kind of thing is a labor of love. You don't just, here it is really coming together. This is in the shop in Charlevoix, Michigan. Yeah. And here are the guys working the aluminum. You know, people understand what an art this is to work with metal and be able to form it like that. I mean, these guys are truly uh, sculptors, you know, to, just to, and to make them symmetrical and, oh my God. What do we have for transmission in this? It is an automatic. I had a five-speed in it originally, but I wanted to be able to drive it. Yeah, yeah. And I have to have an automatic and power steering in order to drive. Right, right. Now. Now let's take a closer look at the car itself. Now, you have a guy with you who travels around the yes, country? Yes, Jeff is my valet. He takes care of Jeff, me and my cars. Jeff, come on in here. Hi, Jeff. Since, Hi, Jeff. How are you? Since, since I became impaired, yeah. I heard Jeff just after I had a stroke. 18 years ago, yeah. and he's been with me ever since and takes care of me and my cars. Now, what is uh, what does a car weigh, Jeff? Any idea? Uh, right around 3,000 Right around 3,000 pounds. Pretty light, pretty nice. Uh, are those Barani wire wheels? They're yes, they are. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, that's... X uh, Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Let's, uh, let's go this way around the car. As you can see, the GT40 influence here in the modern... Uh, Nears. Yes. Yeah. Now, obviously, when you, des did, when you designed this car eight years ago, were you thinking about these small lights, or is that fairly recent? That was during the build that came during up. During the build, okay. We, we had to put did head, head, headlights in the grill, as Stevens had designed it. Right. And we decided to take some liberties and use some modern materials. Yeah. And the air extractors here to get the heat out, very right. nice. That's the GT40 influence, also in yeah. the seats. Right. And uh, plastic. Yeah. Like sun. Yeah, yeah. Boy, it's a nice size car. It's just perfectly proportioned. Not too big, not too wide. And again, I can't emphasize all aluminum. You know, fiberglass is a wonderful material, and I love Corvettes and fiberglass cars, but when I see metal work like this, look how nicely everything is formed and shaped. This is really hard to do, and it takes real craftsmen. There's your gas filler right there. Sort of the European, the way it just, you pull that up, right? And then... Yeah. There you go, and it flips up. And I always love these kind of. Bentley had these back in the. I love details. Yeah, yeah. Just do it like that. I don't want to force anything. Go ahead. I'll fit it in. There you go. Nicely done. Nicely done. And and something that I find really uh, attractive is the rear end of this car. 
Is that a Halibrand quick change? Yes, it is. Okay. That was part of the reason I built the car. I found that at a flea market. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid back in the 60s and 70s, the Halibrand quick change was the cool thing. You'd drive your car to the drags, you'd change the rear end, win the race, put the other ratio back in and drive home again. Very cool. Very nicely done. And beautiful detail around the exhaust. And That's the, very Bugatti influenced yeah, that exhaust yeah. system. And those tail lights are? They're a Corvette. Yeah, Corvette. OK. And I like, you know, sometimes designers have a tendency to over tail light the rear of the car. I see that with a lot of cars. They'll have four across yeah. or six. I like the very simple, just one light on each side. And the third, third brake light there. Oh, where's the third brake light? Oh, there it is, right here. Oh, look at that. Look how nicely that's We're incorporated. Legal. Huh? We're legal. Yeah, you're legal and you're over 18, so that's okay. <laughs> but look how nicely that's incorporated. I'm way over 18. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that. Okay. Just so many details. You can look at it, this car. My cars are known for details. Yeah. I try to put a lot of details on the things I do. And how many cars have you built yourself? Three total. Three total, all original design? Yeah, I built the body. My first car was a body. I built it on a Bacati chassis. Mm -hmm. Oh, on a Bugatti chassis. What, what chassis? Type 38. Okay. okay. I saw it in half and shortened it. Yeah. Well, the Bugatti Club will come looking for you. Be careful. <laughs> that was back in the day when it was just an old car, correct? Yeah. yeah I yeah. paid $900 for the car. <laughs> wow. And the body was shot. Yeah. And I had to build the body to salvage my $900. Wow. I was a kid working at a gas station at that time. Wow. Now, another neat feature of this car is everything in it is electric. The doors, the hood. Uh, Jeff, show us how that works. So if you, get out, if you have to get out of this car in a hurry, you're in a lot of trouble. So do you have to come around here to open the other side now? Yeah, you could do that or... Um, we have a remote as well, yeah, right? Yeah, remote as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll get the hood up. Now why did you choose to go with the uh, all electric rather than just a gas strut? Just to be cool? Yeah. Yeah. Seemed like the thing to do. We wanted up one up the Lamborghini when it was done manually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything on this car looks like a production vehicle. You know, so many times when you when you see a one-off car, you open the hood and it's kind of just wires kind of tucked under and tie wraps and all that kind of stuff. Nothing like that on here. Beautiful aircraft fittings. And look at the and this pops off the wheel, right? Let's take the steering wheel off for a minute. As you can see, God, they look like watch faces almost. Nicely done. It's about time to go for a ride. You're gonna drive a car like this, you gotta look cool. <laughs> so put on the sunglasses. It's amazing how low to the ground you are in this car. Yeah. About 500 horsepower. Very nicely, handles very nicely. If you don't like the wind in your face, it's not your kind of car. But the windshield comes right here. Gets a lot of looks. What? Gets a lot of looks.
cool to build your own car. Very impressive. Great legacy. I could drive this thing all day. Wow, what a thrilling ride that was. Boy, this is a fantastic legacy you got for yourself here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful car. Pretty amazing. It's the Excalibur RS, Robert Shaw, and uh, RS. he's RS, that's right. Or BS, he's, <laughs> but we don't want to say BS, so, we, so he's RS. Now, see, normally I, I take this thing out and do a big burnout, 500 horsepower, 3,000 pounds, but the owner of the crate is sitting right next to me, and uh, I don't want him to hit me in the head with that cane. So, Bob, thank you very much, my friend. You're welcome, Jay. Thank you so much. Very impressive oh, car. Thanks. Very impressive car. You gotta, gotta treasure these old guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>